Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you another update of what is happening with uh, softwood lumber prices, the market, supply demand conditions, things like transportation, still a big problem. It's the third week of March, so uh, we're heading off into the spring construction season. And uh, traditionally, at this time of year, lumber prices would be starting to get a little bit softer as the large home builders in the U.S. will have already ordered their wood uh, that they need for expected projects, projects coming up in the spring. Uh, we didn't have that happen last year or the year before, and we don't know quite yet what's going to happen this year, but we do have, for the last uh, three weeks, prices are pretty flat, uh, especially on the benchmark item, Western Spruce, uh, Pine Fir, KD, 2x4, number 2 and better. Uh, that price is even for the past couple of weeks. It uh, started off in January a little bit higher than at the end of last year, trickled up slightly, kind of leveled off a little bit, and then popped up some more. A lot of the reason for that is the delays to transportation. Um, when someone ordered their wood, uh, you know, in January, and normally would be having uh, somewhat like a six-week window for delivery, uh, they still don't know where their wood is right now. And the sawmill doesn't know where the wood is. Everybody's hunting around on the supply chain. Um, where is the wood uh, already delivered? And so there's, um, you know, reluctant buying to, re <coughs> excuse me, to replace the wood that uh, hasn't arrived yet. Um, and the real estate and construction activity is just nonstop. So housing starts in the U.S., you know, they've, they've been inching up, uh, permits are up more. It's a bit unusual at this time of year. Normally, you know, no November, December, January are slow time for construction activity. Uh, as I said in the previous video, the seasonality that normally happens in real estate and home building doesn't seem to have been going on for the past two years and probably won't this year, which means the normal seasonal cycle of up and down for lumber prices also hasn't been um, as obvious in the past couple of years and probably this year. So let's take a look at the graphs and I'll explain a few things um, about the most recent prices and some of the fundamentals in the market uh, driving that. And so here we have that benchmark softwood lumber commodity item, Western Spruce Pine Fir Kiln Dried. The grade is number two and better, which is the standard grade for construction. Two by fours. Uh, the pink line is 2019. The yellow line is 2020. The crazy blue line is last year. And then the purple line is this year. So for the week of March 18th, that price was flat once again after several weeks. Uh, at $1,400 US per thousand board feet. This is up $994 or 245% from March of 2020 when it was $406 per thousand board feet. So you can see how uh, in third quarter of 2020 that price started to go up to levels not previously seen and then last year around this time in a month, it really peaked super high, which was unexpected. I don't think it'll reach that high this year, and the sales volumes, like I said, are getting a little better. So now we have those uh, six items that I post all the time and I put them on my website. The top line is those Western Spruce 2x4s that you were just looking at. The second line is Southern Yellow Pine on the east side 2x4. And the third line is Eastern Spruce 2x4. These three items are interchangeable. They all meet the building code. They come out of different regions uh, of North America and are available to customers wherever they are to switch between if they don't like the price of one or the other. So as you can see, that second line, the Southern Pine price is down quite a bit compared to the others, which are relatively flat. And that's because uh, some of those mills down there in the U.S. South on the east side, maybe got a little bit too ambitious 
push the price up higher than the customer would accept. And so now they're correcting back down. And this is what I mean about how the market, it's not really played. The buyers, you know, they're sophisticated and they know what items they can use. So there isn't really the possibility of mills just charging whatever they want. The customer knows that they can get wood from another source or in another region and will not accept a price that's so much higher than comparable products. So here we have those same six items plotted against each other in a graph. It looks like 2019 is very flat. That's because normally the price of lumber would change by five or ten dollars a week. And for the past uh, couple of years, it's been changing by $150 a week, which is very difficult for people to plan. Uh, a lot of volatility. And you can see that those highs and lows are now getting worked out. And we're hoping that as this year plays out, the prices are at a more moderate level. Right, and so quite interesting stuff there. Uh, I have to apologize if I sound a bit growly. I was doing a presentation in Europe this morning, six o'clock my time, uh, very good, um, one hour through uh, Timber Trends. I have put a link on my website. So if you go to my website in the link here below, uh, madisonsreport.com and you can see uh, my write-up of the various updates that I do, some of the other content that we cover. There's, uh, if you go along the top menu, there's uh, subscribe where you can fill out a form to see a sample of the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel prices that we cover every week, updated Friday for subscribers. If you just need this uh, small overview, uh, click subscribe here on YouTube to be informed when I do another update and click like so that other people can see it. And um, we're heading now into April when construction activity in Canada and the US is going to really start picking up. The demand is, as I said, nonstop. What I'm saying to people in a simple way, if they're wondering, you know, really what is going on. It's been so un unpredictable for the last couple of years. It really looks like 2022 is going to be quite a repeat of 2021. So for the rest of this year, it's likely that the way things went last year will be quite similar this year. Um, it's the unknowns which are making everybody sort of cautious and nervous the weather events, the fires and storms and all of these emergencies constantly, it seems like, especially, you know, um, up in the forest area here in British Columbia, affecting the manufacturing ability to deliver, uh, really causing um, prices to stay high. But the sales, sales volumes are not that great. Uh, mills would prefer you know, to be at the uh, production and sales levels when markets were good in the past, which I guess the last time really was 2004, 2005. 2018 was a pretty good year, but everything else in the last uh, decade and a half has been low and slow time. So people ask about things like, you know, the mortgage rates are increasing. Well, it's still really low. I mean, it's higher than what we're used to again in the past 10 years, but you know, it's in historical having 10% interest rates was normal. So it's still like four or 5% and it's gonna apparently go up. Uh, that might deter a few people. However, the way that it's been with uh, house for sale listings, hundreds of people coming to see the house and still the offers are, you know, $100,000 above the list price. So when the input costs, like for example, the lumber, let's say it's an additional $14,000, whatever number, um, it, to the price of the home due to the increased cost of lumber, how much do people care about that if the price of the home itself is going for, you know, multiples compared to four years ago. Um, one thing I, I will say, I've got a video coming up for um, 
housing starts. Uh, in December, I reported that uh, it seems that one fifth of homes sold in the U.S. were by investment groups, uh, hedge funds, uh, trust funds, and all this kind of stuff. Now, in uh, toward the end of March 2022, 30%. So that does give a little bit of an idea that it might be a bubble. You know, I've been saying that the um, housing market is not in a bubble. It's real people buying real homes. Some people are buying second homes, but it's really people moving and moving up. But now when you start getting that high of a proportion of investors, that kind of was one of the reasons we had that problem before in 2006. So I would watch that to see, you know, is that um, level of 30% of total going to increase or is the, if that will stay the same, it is really the momentum of people, first time buyers and um, people uh, moving into uh, more deluxe homes that is driving the increase in the house prices, which of course does drive the housing construction, which of course does increase the demand for lumber.